Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today, we're going to be reviewing The Last Light of the Sun by Guy Gavriel K. Now, this book came out in 2004. So let's review the cover first. You know I love graphic design and book cover illustrations, so let's take a look at this one. 2004, this is probably my one of my least favorite Guy Gabriel covers. Um, no offense to the artist or anything that did it, because I think it's fine. It's got the, uh, it's got sort of a Photoshop um, prow of a Viking ship in the mist with some mountains behind it. And then, if, I don't know if you can see it, but underneath that, there's like some Viking scroll work writing, some runes, or I don't know, typography of some sort. And then we get around to the backside. It's okay. It's just, there's been some really dynamic Guy Gabriel K covers over the years that I think stand out a lot, a lot more. But anyway, I won't show them all to you. So, I, I just finished watching The Northman, which is a movie that came out in 2022 in the month of May. Yeah, I think we're in May, maybe the end of April. Can't remember when the movie came out, but I just saw it. It got me in a Viking mood. Um, so I wanted to read some Viking stuff. Well, I've, I didn't want to read Bernard Cornwell. I'm going to get to that. I've been reading some, uh, you know... Uh, other stuff, but I did remember that Guy Gabriel K did a Viking story, so that's the one I picked up. You know, I was noticing because all of Guy Gabriel K's works, and I've got them all right here, I'll show them to you. I've got every Guy Ga Gabriel K novel that there is right there on that shelf, and they're all part of a shared world, they're all standalone novels for the most part. Guy Gabriel K, all of his stories sort of share the same landscape. Like, um, you know, Tigana was part of the same world as the Song of Arbonnet, and then the Sailing to Sarantum was part of the same world. They're all part of the same world. Just different stories told in this same fantasy world, which is representative of our own Europe and our own ancient histories. Um, so it's sort of an alternate universe. Uh, universe that um, Guy Gabriel has created. It's sort of like uh, Brandon Sanders, Sanderson's Cosmere, where everything takes place as an on an alternate universe, Earth, if that makes sense. This takes place in the alternate universe Viking area that Guy Gabriel has created. And in the book, there is a character listing. When one of the things that caught my attention was, it says characters just a partial listing characters partial listing i'm like i've never seen that before a why partial listing why not just list them all there weren't that many why not just list them all one of those kind of things that makes you go hmm what were they thinking i don't know but they did it anyway opening page we get immediate references to, for instance, his shared world. We get immediate references to the Lions of al Rasan. We get immediate references to his Sarantium mosaic books. So we know right off the bat that we are that we were playing in the same exact universe as all those other books, which is cool. That's why we love these books. An al Rasan trader has come up from the south, and the Lions of al Rasan took place in sort of a an alternate France slash Spain slash Pyrenees mountains area of Europe. Well, one of those guys has traveled north into Viking territory to trade, to be a trader, a trader, not a traitor, but to trade goods. So he's a yeah a trader. Um, once he's there, he gets embroiled in a lot of, um, 
of the goings on that are going on up north. One of which is a, a fellow named Bern Thorkelson who steals a horse. And uh, horse thieving ain't good. It's like in the Old West, you'd get hung for it. Well, it's even worse in Viking. You steal a horse. But anyway, he takes it to this witch woman slash fortune, fortune teller. to, And she works some sort of pagan ritual on him and, and tells him his future and whatnot. And, and, and sort of he's kind of like living his life through this horoscope viewpoint of this witch woman. And then, um, you know, as he's traveling with the stolen horse off through the landscape, Guy Gabriel K does such a great job of just world building right there. Just as this one lone guy travels with a stolen horse, we, we, we get to just a sense of how brutal the people are. Now, if you watched the Northman movie, you, that, that, that put it right on the screen, how brutal and paganistic those Vikings were. Well, Guy Gabriel K does the same thing within that first little scene there where he, where our, our, our guy Burn is walking across a field and he knows that virgins from his clan have been buried in that field um, to help that field um, grow many crops. You know, I mean, that's the kind of stuff we're talking about. They really believed some wacky stuff. Like if we kill our prettiest virgins and bury them in the field, that their crops will grow better. I mean, just bonkers just bonkers but they believed it and they did it and how cruel gruesome and bloody it must have been to have to witness all that and you can tell burn is not really on board with a lot of it even though he goes to a pagan witcher which to get his fortune told um now then we jump to alan and dia who are cow thieves along with, and then they kind of, there's a bunch of other stories. It's kind of like the show of the Vikings where we've got Ragnar and the Vikings and they go over to England and we've got two different stories being told. We've got the Viking story and the English, you know, that's kind of what we've got here. We've got the Vikings and the English. And now we, with Alan and Daya, they're cow thieves. They're, they're also got embroiled in some stuff in England and then Rhiannon and Helda, are sort of our main characters end up being. And um, it's much like that show, The Vikings, where those two sort of um, cultures clash. The English, the English, and the Vikings, they clash, you know. The Christians and the pagans, they clash. And we get to see the troubled sides of both and how both sides were brutal, evil, and just not good. That being said... This gritty realism um, that comes with most Viking Norse tales, put in Guy Gabriel Kay's hands, he adds just a magical softness with his poetic prose. I mean, he's just one of the best writers there is. One of my favorite writers of fantasy, if not fiction altogether. And just the way he writes this adds a magical touch to it where it just seems like you're not really... Like those shows like the Vikings and, and the Last Kingdom and the Northmen would just were in the mud and blood and guts of everything all the time. Similarly here, but Guy Gabriel K makes everything seem more hopeful. And I think it's because he's touched, he's given, he's injected a little bit of magic in this. You know, there's magical woods, there's mystical fairies, um, there's things going on, there's just supernatural currents interweaving with all of this stuff that's not dark in, well, some of it's dark in nature, but a lot of it is, like, uh, hopeful in nature, uh, if that, any of that makes sense. So, anyway, I give, um, I didn't want to give away too much of the plot here. Um, yeah, well, I'll read what, I'll, I'll read the, uh, the plots of these two, because I didn't do a very good job of it. Bern Thorkelson, punished for his father's sins, denied his heritage and home, commits an act of vengeance and desperation that brings him face to face across the sea with a past he's been trying to leave behind. In the Anglican lands of Aldred, their shared, their shrewd king battle inner, their shrewd king battles inner demons all the while. He shores up his defenses with his alliances and diplomacy with swords and arrows, and blah blah blah. Yeah, I did it pretty much the same way. I. I, I described it as the same as the back of the book described it. So we'll edit all that out. And then we will give this a um, 
fair eight out of ten. It's a good book, not my favorite Guy Gabriel K novel, because you know I give most of the Guy Gabriel K novels tens out of tens. Um, this one was very good, though. Very good, though. Eight out of ten.